Hey YouTube, how's it going? Venomman20 here tonight. First and foremost, I want to start off by apologizing for the lighting. As you can tell, my ven venomous reptile room is still nowhere near completion. But uh, we're working on it. It's a work in progress. Next, I want to start off by saying that this video is actually brought to you by all my fans on my Facebook page. I asked them the other day to help me get more likes. And I normally get about 20 a week. And they managed to help me get about 70 likes within a 24-hour period. So hats off to them. Thank you very much. I asked them if there's any way, any video I could upload for them. They wanted to see venomous snakes. So I had a friend, Dustin, ask me if I could do a how-to handle venomous snakes video. So to help them both out, I just compacted this into one video. So first and foremost, I want to start off by saying if you are going to think about handling venomous snakes, you want to get a couple hooks. You don't just want one or two hooks, you want all size hooks, a couple that are pretty close in length. Uh, I have another hook back here. If you watch a lot of my videos, you will see hooks placed around the room. That's just in case if I lose my hooks to the snake, I have some backup hook available. Another thing is this video, I do not want you to think I am urging you to go out and start handling venomous snakes. If you have not had a teacher, if you have not owned venomous snakes of your own, please don't go out and start handling just because you watch this video. You have nowhere near the amount of knowledge needed in order to safely do so. So in order to keep you safe, because it is a life and death matter, and to keep your family safe, please don't do it. Just just heed the advice. They are very dangerous. They're nothing to be played with. you got to take this completely serious. Now, uh, like I said, you need to invest in hooks. Um, another thing you will not see me use are tongs. A lot of people think that tongs, you have control of the snake, but a lot of times when you grab the snake forcefully, you can hurt its spine, you can damage the, yeah, you can damage the snake, you can kill the snake. You don't want any part of that. So uh, another thing, a lot of snakes freak out when you grab a hold of them. It's kind of like a predatory response. They think they're about to be eaten, so they just they go nuts. Mambas are one of the worst. They just totally freak out when they're grabbed a hold of. So with that being said, I do not use tongs. Um, uh, maybe if I was underneath the house pulling a snake out from an area that I just couldn't get to, it would be acceptable. But otherwise, in my line of work, I don't see it necessary uh, to use tongs in any way, shape, or form. Um, another thing, uh, feeding tongs. I don't have any on me right now, but you need something to feed the venomous snake with if that's what you're doing. You can't use your hands. It's common sense, people. We all know this. Anyway, let's get to the interesting part. Let's show you some venomous snakes. and uh, So I've got you a little bit closer to the action. As you can see, this guy is coiled up and ready to go. He is very agitated. Now this species is notorious for being agitated. They're very hard to handle in captivity. I love the albino, very bright yellow. I will have some pictures posted up on my Facebook page if you want to see better quality shots of this guy. But they're very springy, very awesome. But anyway, as I was getting back to the hooks, my goal when handling a venomous snake is number one to keep it up on the table but my goal is to keep the hook in between me and the snake at all times i also try not to cross my hooks if you have to you have to the faster you go the faster he will go so just try to stay calm try to keep him calm sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't that's another big thing. A lot of people panic. If a snake hits the floor, they see it as an escaped animal. It's not an escaped, it's just on the floor. Now we got to pick it up off the floor, not the end of the world. A lot of times I work off the floor just in case if I drop the snake. I don't want to injure it. Now I always try to use a hook long enough that I can stay out of strike range. This hook might be a little bit short. I'm going to go ahead and trade it out. Get it down to the floor. Now another thing, you've seen how I moved him off the table? A lot of people try to reach inside the cage, grab the glass of water, you know, it's a bowl of water, and work with the snake in the enclosure. That's a horrible idea. You never want to do that. Another thing, as you can see, I cleaned off the table. A lot of people try to work around clutter. That's another horrible idea. As you can see, once you get him out, once you start moving slow, this guy's not too bad. Now, as you can see, I've never touched this animal. I have not grabbed him. I have not restrained him. A lot of people think it's necessary to restrain it behind the hook, to have, or right behind the head, to have full control of the snake. I don't want full control of the snake. It's okay for him to be in control. I don't want to take away his livelihood, his 
only form of protection. Therefore, I'm gentle. I go slow. All seems to work out. Let's go and put him back. So this is the last snake I have to show you. This is a Spitalaps lubricus callisi, also known as a Nibian cobra or the African coral cobra. These are not an actual true cobra. These are in the Spitalaps family, not the nausea family, like the true cobras. But they are an elapid. They are fairly venomous, but they're probably one of the least toxic of all the elapids. I do believe out of the whole genus, they have only killed two people ever recorded, and they were two small children. These are very cool snakes. Very calm, or at least mine's very calm. This is a male. This was actually my third venomous snake I've ever owned. Had him forever. He's in shed right now, so he's not real pretty. A little jumpy, but not bad for him. But as you can see, we're just going slow. Another thing you need to remember while hooking is don't tilt the hook up. If the snake slides off there, he could slide right on down the hook onto your hand. And you don't want any part of that. Now, if he was an arboreal, like my friend Dustin handles... If he started to climb up the hook, a lot of times you can spin the hook opposite in which the head is spinning up the hook, and a lot of times they'll fall off. Helps a lot. Like I said, having another backup hook to work it back down the hook also works or helps a lot. But I just love these snakes. They're so interesting. They are always curious. They're always wanting to check something out. Very neat little guy. But anyway, I hope you learned a little something from this. I hope this helped you out a little bit on your quest for knowledge. Um, yet again, be safe out there. Don't do anything stupid. If you're not qualified to handle a venom snake, don't. Please don't. But uh, anyway, don't forget to check out my Facebook page. There's a link down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Have a wonderful night. One last thing. Very sorry about this. I decided I'm going to need to change days in which I film and upload videos to YouTube. This Tuesday thing just totally doesn't work on my schedule. So uh, as inconsistent as I am as of right now, I'm sure you won't really notice the difference. But my new days are Thursdays, and if I have any additional footage to upload, it will be uploaded on Sundays. I hope this isn't an inconvenience to you. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And yet again, hope to see you back on Thursday or Sunday, if allotted. Have a wonderful night.